Thanks. And that will move us on to our final question six, which David Eckstein will be framing for us, which is moving the UDN forward. And for this session, we have allotted a little bit of extra time for the discussion because it starts focusing a little bit on summarizing what we've been discussing so far today. And with that, I will turn it over to David. Okay, so uh, I am David Eckstein. I am uh, at the Office of Rare Diseases Research at NCATS, and I will uh, help frame uh, the discussion going forward, so uh, basically framing the big picture. Uh, the UDN perspective will be provided by uh, Rizwan Hamid from uh, Vanderbilt University. Uh, the outside expert perspective will be from Bruce Corp from the University of Alabama at uh, Birmingham, and the moderator summarizer will be uh, Marin Schooner. Uh, who is one of our ESA members, and she's from the VA of Greater Los Angeles. So um, how did we get where we are? So it all started with uh, und undiagnosed patients. Uh, six to eight percent of the inquiries that our office used to get were from people who were still on their diagnostic uh, uh, odyssey, and the question was, what can NIH do to help? Uh, and the quick answer to that was the UDP, and so uh, that was stood up in 2008, and you've heard all the um, uh, descriptive uh, um, stuff about uh, what that became uh, after a few years uh, when it was obvious that this was a sustainable type of program, uh, that there was a need in the community. Uh, the question became, can this be uh, replicated outside of the NIH? Uh, and the answer, or at least uh, the way to maybe figure out the answer, was the UDN. Uh, but this gave us the opportunity to ask sort of a bonus question. Uh, what sort of uh, variations could we be asking uh, in the UDN? Um, what types of other options could be tested to see if they worked as well or, or perhaps even worked better than the way we were doing things uh, already? Uh, so just to remind you, um, the UDN objectives are to improve the level of diagnosis and care, uh, facilitate the uh, research into the etiology of the undiagnosed disease, and to create an integrated and collaborative research community identifying other options. Uh, I have a couple options that we've uh, discussed previously here, sequencing prior versus after, whole exome versus whole genome, billing insurance uh, versus using research dollars. However, the Common Fund process is uh, brings us to the, what I call the big question, uh, which is what is, uh, what should the future of the UDN be, uh, and what does the future UD UDN look like? Uh, the answer, well, we're hoping to get information from you to help us uh, arrive at that uh, answer. Are we aware of some possibilities? Sure. Uh, we can continue uh, as we've been going. Uh, the big question is what happens in uh, f uh, six or seven years when the common fund money runs out? Where does the money come from? Um, if the program is just about the diagnosis, perhaps we uh, continue to uh, work on the manual of operations, make that publicly available, which it already is. Uh, we issue a white pap paper on best practices and we walk away. Um, obviously, uh, there's been a lot of sentiment today uh, that it's more than just about the diagnosis. Um, perhaps it becomes an infrastructure program where, uh, especially if the uh, billing proves to be uh, sufficient for maintaining a, a clinical site, uh, maybe the program just works on developing the, uh, uh, the coordinating center and the cores, and the clinical sites are, are able to finance themselves. Uh, perhaps some sort of public-private partnership. Obviously, there are a lot of stakeholders out there uh, in industry, whether it's the pharma industry, insurance industry, or whatever, who could work with academia and NIH to form some sort of partnership. And perhaps there's another type of um, future that we haven't figured out yet. Uh, but it's critically important uh, to figure uh, some of this out now, because what the phase two version of the UDN looks like will be largely dependent on what we figure the future needs to be. We have to be able to answer certain questions in phase two to get to that future. Now to answer the big question, we have to ask a lot of smaller but just as important questions. Uh, what are the end goals of the UDN? Um, what can the UDN uniquely do that other uh, organizations can't? Obviously what is the vision and the mission of the UDN? Uh, what is the best strategy to optimize the outcomes, and how will the UDN be sustained once the common fund funding uh, goes away? And finally, what are the advantages of being a network? 
uh, and hopefully we will get some lively discussion about these. Um, and uh, I guess uh, first talking about the UDM perspective is, is Rizwan. 